Welcome to Neff Talk Live. I'm Carrie Davis, and today we're going to be exploring 80-20 aluminum extrusion, along with some common fastening methods and how they can easily work for your next project. Today I'm joined by Chris Cook, one of our NEF solution specialists. He's going to show us some simple fastening methods for 8020. Thanks, Carrie. So as Carrie mentioned, all I really want to get into today is some of the more common fastening practices that, that we offer through 8020 and kind of get into some details so that you can figure out which, which fastener is going to be best for your application. And we're going to show you some light assembly and show you how to just quickly uh, integrate the fastener into the 8020 extrusion. And we're just going to have some fun with it. All right, Chris, sounds great. Let's get to it. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Okay, so the first type of fastener I'd like to talk about is the end fastener. And the end fastener basically consists of a wing clip and a nut. The nice thing about this method is it's, it's inexpensive, it's fast to assemble, and it's an incredibly strong hold. So how this works is you take your threaded end of your extrusion, you put your wing clip there, you take the bolt, thread it in, and you, you want to get it pretty close, but you need to leave a little bit of play in there to allow you to connect it to the other, other bar. So now what I'll take is my other extrusion. And in this extrusion, what you'll see here is I've got an access hole that's pre-drilled. So what I'll do is I will take, basically, so you guys can see, that wing clip goes right into the T-slot. Get it nice and tight and what you'll notice there is you've got a very strong uh, connection and what you're basically doing is you're drawing these two joints together so you're using the extrusion against the other extrusion and that's what's creating that that extra strong hold that you're getting here with this end fastener the only thing to keep in mind with the end fastener here is you'll notice i've got that pre-drill uh, access point that I mentioned earlier. So you can put this end fastener anywhere along this bar in that T-slot, but what you need to keep in mind is that anywhere you want to be able to tighten it down, you have to have that access hole. So just as a recap, this is the end fastener. It's fast to assemble, very strong hold, and cost effect effective. I just keep in mind that it's non-adjustable. So the next fastener I'd like to talk about is the anchor fastener. This is the milled out pocket that you have to have on the extrusion. So these go together just like that. Put the fastener in its home. You take your opposing bar, line up the T-slot. You drop into whatever position along this bar you want. That's one of the advantages to this type of fastener is the adjustability. So then you put your wrench in there, tighten her down. And now I've got it locked in place right there. This is the, uh, as I had mentioned, this is one of the strongest holding options you have available. You do have the adjustability along the opposing bar. Uh, the only thing I would caution you on is if you're going to do this at home, at the very least, I'd make sure 8020 mills out that pocket for you, unless, unless you've got a way to be able to do that at home, uh, to be able to mill that out in the aluminum. The other thing is, is this is one of the... Um, more expensive type of fasteners that you can offer. All right, guys, so the last fastener I'd like to talk about is corner bracket, corner gusset. So I'm not going to show you how to assemble all these because once you see one, it's, it's, it's the same for the rest of them. But uh, just know, kind of on this corner uh, gusset, this is a double. I obviously have a, a single mounting option, which is basically just that bracket cut in half. Uh, so I just want to point that out. And same thing with the corner plate. I've also got a smaller version of this that's, that's half, this, uh, half the length here. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to assemble this, this corner plate right here. So basically what you've got, you've got your, you got your plate, you got your wing, and you've got your bolt. And what you do, drop your bolt down into the, into the uh, your, your hole in your plate, take your wing, get it threaded on. I, I would really only try to shoot for just enough to keep it from falling off. You want to give yourself plenty of space to be able to get it down into the T-slot of the extrusion. So now I'm going to start to put this into, into the T-slot like so. And get it, try to, you know, get 
right up there on the corner. You don't want to start tightening down. So once you get one, it'll hold it in place, then the rest are easy. This is good for do-it-yourself at home projects because there's no drilling, there's no tapping, there's no machining that needs to be done on the extrusion, basically. Um, some people really like this look. It kind of gives it a nice industrial finish. The only thing I want to make sure that you guys are aware of is that it is not the strongest hold. If, if rigidity and strength is what you're going for, this is not the best way to go about it. Um, because you're not, you're not using the extrusions, you're not actually pulling them up, um, that, that joint right there, you're not actually pulling it up against it and using the extrusion strength against it against each other so what you've really got here is you've if you can picture taking a business card or a slim piece of paper or something like that you've always got a little bit of an air gap in there that you can slide that down in and that's what what gives you that little bit of flexibility in it that's why i say it's not quite as rigid whereas the other methods we talked about draw the extrusions together and that's where you really get that extra strength chris i really think that sheds some light on how easy 80 20 extrusion and its fastening methods are Thanks, Carrie. Uh, as we said in the beginning of this, these are just a few of the common fasteners. I just want to be clear that 8020 has a whole slew of, of other fastener options that I would encourage you to get in touch with your, your NEF sales representative to be able to help you pick through that to, be, to decide what's best for your application. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure is clear to you, the viewer, before we let you guys go, is uh, one of the things that NEF offers is free design. And for those of you out there that already do your own design, you may say, well, that doesn't really apply to me. But let me tell you how it can help you when it actually comes time to ordering. It gives you a few other options. So by, by having us do the design, you can either order this where it comes to you fully assembled, or based on your bill of material, we can tag the extrusion so that it makes your assembly uh, much easier for you. And it should cut your time virtually in half by doing it that way. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this process. I'm so glad everyone was able to join us today for NEF Talk Live and that you learned a little bit about the world of 8020 and its many fastening methods.